Prince me uh, Sabrina Early Cut. Um, I had my VSG surgery um, August 1st at 10.45 a.m. at the Crescent Medical Center with Dr. Nick Nicholson in Lancaster, Texas. His offices are in Dallas, Texas and Plano, Texas. Um, I am now four days out from surgery. Um, just to give you my stats, my starting weight before the journey was about 287. My weight the day of surgery was 270, 277 pounds. Uh, my weight as of today is 267.2 pounds. So altogether, I've lost a little over 20 pounds since starting the journey, and it's only for days out from surgery and I've lost about 10, 11 pounds since surgery and I haven't been working out or anything. Um, so I went in um, at 8.45, you have to go in two hours before surgery. I took a nausea pill um, to help with nausea after surgery. Lo and behold, I did not have any nausea after surgery, which I was so happy about. Um, went in, they got me changed, fixed up, put my cap on, um, put my IV in. The woman missed my vein and blew it. Um, she said it's mainly because I was dehydrated because, of course, you can't eat anything the day before surgery. And you can only drink, like, water before, the day before surgery. Um, and then the day of surgery, you couldn't eat anything or drink anything, of course. So I was very dehydrated. Um, so she blew that baby and she tried again on this hand and she got it. Um, I hate IVs, I really do. The needle is so big. Um, but after that, we waited around for about two hours and then they rode me to the OR, kissed my husband, tell him I'll see him later. And they rode me to the OR. They didn't do a countdown or anything, they just Put the mask over my face and I was out. I don't remember anything doing the surgery, which is a good thing. Um, so after that, um, I woke up in the recovery. My husband was there. They were just getting situated, doing my vitals. After my vitals, they moved me to my room. He did so many surgeries that day that I didn't have a normal room. I had to be put in ICU. Um, I did that. Um, so I was very frustrated because everyone described the gas pain, but you never really understand how much that gas pain will hurt until you experience it. How they, ex how others explained the gas pain, it was accurate, but I was not expecting what it was. I still wasn't. It was so uncomfortable, like a ball of air just floating throughout your body, floating in your chest, down to your stomach, and any way you laid, it did not help whatsoever. Wherever you laid, wherever I laid, turned to, bent over, it didn't help. So, I was so frustrated. So, I just kept sipping water. I had like five goals to reach before they discharged me. Something about I had to urinate first. I had to, my pain level had to go down eventually. Um, I had to drink a certain amount of water every 15 minutes, a little uh, cup of water, a little small container of water every 15 minutes. I had to walk around. I, it was a couple things. Um, I was also told during my surgery, they did, have a, they did put a catheter in me. And before I was awakened, they took the catheter out, which I was happy about because I hate feeling the pressure of getting a catheter. Um, also, um, the leak test they do to make sure that the staples close everything, they do that while you're sleeping, while you're um, in surgery. So that's why my urine was like green and a little bluish. Um, after that, um, I was just so frustrated. I cursed with my husband. I complained so much. I was a real, excuse my French, bitch. I'm just so frustrated because anything I did did not help the gas pain whatsoever. I walked. 
Oh, Jesus, I walk so far just to help. I sip, sip water. I think that's the main thing that helped me with the gas pain is sipping water. Sip, sip, sip. If you try and gulp that water down, you're going to be in so much pain. You don't want to rip your, your lungs out and rip your, your entire chest wall out. Um, so don't gulp any water. Sip that water because I feel, from my experience, the more you sip that water and it goes into your stomach, it replaces your stomach from having that gas there. So the more water you put down there, the more gas you're going to burp up. And I bur- I was burping a lot, a lot. And um, everyone was saying that's a good thing that I kept burping. So that happened. Um, after that, we were discharged after about three hours. Um, which they said it was a good thing because I... I um, so they want they want me to walk. They wanted me to feel better to where I could move around a lot more. So we got discharged, went to the bed and breakfast. Whenever we go somewhere we use a we use a bed and breakfast. Um but this thing needs to focus. Let me see. I don't know if it's gonna focus right here. Okay. Um everywhere we go we use the Airbnb. It's more comfortable, more homely. So we went there and two days after the surgery on the third, I went to my follow-up appointment with my with my surgeon, and it said everything was fine. My incisions are healing well. Um, I did have really bad chest pain. Um, it wasn't gas pain. It was just like something sitting on my chest, and I still feel like that to this day. So I have a spirometer. It's a it's in the living room, but it's a little uh, breathing thing where you you gotta breathe in. And it goes up, but I had to reach 2,600 because she calculated something with my weight and height and stuff. And I had to breathe in about uh, 2,600 ml. Uh, it took me a while to get there. The first day I tried it, I only went to 500. The day after, I, I, I was doing it like every two hours. The day after that, I was doing maybe about 1,500 and I kept going up and I finally got to 2,600. <laughs> But uh, it is still painful to kind of breathe. It's a uh, pressure here. Um, yeah, I had thick film coming out. Um, basically pneumonia, a lot of pneumonia symptoms. So they just told me I had to keep breathing through that spirometer. That was going to help with the chest pressure and um, from getting a bad pneumonia because they have pneumonia. Um, so, yeah, that happened. I'm now home. Um, I probably didn't drink a little sip of protein shake out of the four days I've been out of surgery. I've had a lot of water. Well, not really. I had, I drank like a bottle of water. Uh, I drank a bottle of this water. It took me a day to drink this whole thing. The day of surgery, the day after surgery, it took me a day to drink this whole thing. Um, cause I just kept sipping and sipping and pushing. Um, and of course I needed a little taste, so I would drink these also, the Zero Gatorade, uh, which has no calories, no sugars in it. Um, I can't drink any juices or anything because they have, they're basically like uh, liquid sugar. That's what my doctor told me. Liquid sugar that I would be drinking from drinking like juices and stuff like that. Um, So I've literally only been drinking Gatorade, Zero, and water. Today is my first time trying... Um, vegetable broth here. I didn't I didn't drink it all, but I did eat a good bit, probably about a half a cup of the broth, which is a good thing for me because I haven't tried anything else besides water and Gatorade. Um, let's see here. My I have five incisions. Um, they're okay. Um, they put dermabond on it. They didn't tape it down or anything. But I'm gonna show you guys my incisions. I'm in bed right now. I actually got up to do laundry and stuff like that. And my husband made me sit down because I'm not supposed to be doing all that. Uh, I've been uh, trying to unpack our suitcase. And he made me sit down, sit my butt down because I'm not supposed to be uh, doing really lifting anything or doing too much. Uh, But walking, they said walk, walk. I can't exercise for three weeks, but I can walk. But these are my incisions. So... This is the first two here. And it's very itchy. So I know it's a good thing. That means it's healing. So 
if it focuses. These are my two incisions. I have one over here. And I have one here. And one here. This is the one they pulled the stomach out of. And it has like... I mean, it's, these are very itchy. Like, very itchy. And they said just let them fall off by themselves. And um, not to pick at them or anything. And when I take a shower, don't scrub that side or anything like that. Um, but, yeah. I'm, I'm happy it's over with. Uh, the gas pain really took me for a world spin. Like, I was really frustrated. I was like, I didn't think I was doing so good. I don't think I was... I don't know, making progress, and everyone was saying I made a really good progress. My husband, Will, he said I was making great progress. He said I I kept walking even when I didn't want to walk. I still got up and walked when I, you know, I couldn't handle the gas pain, and I started cursing and stuff. He said, you got it. So I kept sipping water. I kept walking. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm just excited. And to say that I've just been laying in bed most of the time. Well, I walk. I try and walk as much as I can. And then I sit in bed. Um, to say that I've lost about 11 pounds since surgery is amazing. And all together through this journey, I've lost about 21 pounds. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm happy. I'm just, I just know when I'm able to walk a little more that I'm going to drop this weight like crazy. I don't regret, um, this surgery whatsoever. Um, and also one more, well, a side note, um, I was told that if I don't have a bowel movement in about five days, well, five days from surgery. So right now, if I don't have a bowel movement by tomorrow, I'm told to go and get a modium. In the pharmacy that will that should help me have a bowel movement um i think i passed gas i know it's tmi guys but i mean come on this is about a surgery and i want to tell you guys every single thing about it um so i've passed gas maybe twice yesterday in the day before it was like big thing of gas that i passed it wasn't smelly it was just like air coming out and I felt so relieved after I passed gas I've never felt so relieved from passing gas before as I did yesterday and the day before um but they still said it's not good enough I still need to make a bowel movement um so we're gonna see how that goes um I will come with you guys in a, with an update probably in a week maybe less than that um by the time I go back to work towards the end of August, I am I will be on pureed foods. I'll be able to eat like Jello, finally apple sauces. Like I can't wait. And the thing is, how people say they they after surgery they crave. Oh, this hurts. Oh. Sometimes I swallow air and I feel it going through my stomach very slowly and it hurts like hell. Um. And it's still painful. To, it's painful to breathe for me. It's because when you breathe, you're expanding your abdominal area. And it hurts every time because it's so sore and tender. Um, but again, so another side note, one more side note. A lot of uh, patients from VSG or even R&Y surgery, they say they crave these foods and stuff. And... I don't know how they can go back to eating those bad foods that put them in the predicament they were in a week or so ago. Because I see it like this. I'm in the liquid stage. That's all I can intake. Straight liquids. That's it. If I can't put it through a fine strainer, I can't consume it. Or it's going to get stuck in my staple line. All I've been drinking, Gatorade and water. And I just started eating broth. So... I'm going to be very happy when I can eat a bowl of applesauce or a, a container of Jello. And so when I get to eating regular food, oh my God, I can't wait to eat a piece of uh, baked salmon with um, some veggies because you're not able to eat anything right now. So why, when you're able to eat solid foods again, why go back to the same processed full of calorie, disgusting food that's going to add that weight back to you. Why not be grateful to be able to eat salads again and eat something that is nutritious, like veggies, salmon, 
um, chickens. Like, why do that? Why sabotage yourself? Going through this journey and through this pain and uh, emotionally, mentally, physically. Why go through all this? And in the end, you're eating all this crap. Yes, we can still eat our favorite food like my favorite food is fried catfish i plan on eating a little piece of that every now and then i will i'm not saying i will give up all like fried fish but i won't eat it like i used to i may get like a small strip of catfish every once in a blue moon or every other month that's not going to sabotage me but you guys if you're going through all this stuff all of this pain uh the mental anguish in a sense and just going through this amazing journey why put the same stuff down your throat that put you in this predicament you guys have the willpower okay just think about you guys have to be on liquids i've been on liquids for three weeks wouldn't you be grateful to have a piece of salmon instead of a big juicy greasy burger with fries on the side something that's going to be super nutritious you know but just think about that i know i'm talking your heads off but I just wanted to give you guys an update on my surgery. Um, um, yeah, that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions, please just message me, email me, comment, subscribe. Because I'm not one of these big channels, but I am real. I give real. Um, I talk about a lot of stuff on my channel. I do a lot of things in here. Um, and I just want to be open. If you guys have any questions, please ask. I will answer right away and now that i'm not working for a couple of weeks i have more time to reply quick quicker than i usually do so um if you guys have any questions please ask like subscribe and um hit that red button and subscribe okay uh if you have any questions please ask thanks bye